Hello, my name is Dr. Laura Gray. I am a pediatric psychologist at Children's National, currently working in the chronic pain program. And I am here today to talk about some challenges that are coming up with going back to school. Okay, our first question. Can you share tips and techniques to help kids manage the stress of being back in school, adjusting back to school full time? Absolutely. Now, for many kids, they might have been on virtual school or doing hybrid schooling last year. So returning to school this year is likely going to look different. We're telling parents and children to expect an adjustment period. It is starting a whole new routine. It's possibly a new school. And it's going to take several weeks to establish this new routine. It could take even a little longer than that to really feel comfortable. So in-person school uses different skills than virtual. And when it's been so long since we've used these skills, it's just going to feel like a completely whole new type of school. So it's okay to forget things like maybe not remembering where things are in the school building or how to schedule a homework time at home or how to take notes in class when I'm not doing it on the screen. Um, and we can anticipate that you might be more fatigued, just all of that adjustment and getting used to new things. It takes some time um, and, and it takes a lot of energy, but preparing in advance, come up with a routine, having that structure can help us feel more secure and stable. Setting a bedtime routine, a wake up time, what's the time for school, schedule when we're gonna do homework after school, dinner time, when are the extracurricular activities going to be kind of reviewing that daily and weekly schedule and preparing before practicing, getting into that sleep schedule before school starts. All of that can help with preparing for that adjustment period. And maybe even talking about what were some of those old strategies for older kids. Maybe it was, you know, what used to work for you. Maybe you did your homework every night and still waiting instead of waiting till the end of the week. What study strategies did you use for in-person tests that might be different? Or, you know, what, what different things do maybe that you've done before that you could try using again? Maybe this is things like using a planner or um, helping to prepare for long-term projects, right? Another thing parents might want to do is just brainstorm recharge strategies sharing how parents recharge themselves when they're feeling stressed and brainstorming how their child could recharge. Maybe that's some art projects, painting, listening to music, yoga, dance parties, taking a bath, a bike ride, meditation, phone call to grandma. What are some of the things that we're expecting it's going to be more stressful? What are things we can be making sure we're doing to help to be managing that stress? Let's see, next question. Do you have tips to help kids manage distractions, disruptive students, talking to friends and focusing on the teacher? Absolutely. So some of these things maybe are going to be different than what they were previously, right? That um, these are different types of distractions than kids had to use whenever they were in the virtual school setting, right? So we need kids to remember what the basic rules are in the classroom, right? The hybrid school or virtual school maybe had different rules that were explicit and in-person is going to have different distractions, right? The noise of the kid next to you instead of trying really hard not to jump onto YouTube during class, right? So talking with kids about respectful classroom rules, things like listening when the teacher is talking and making eye contact. Maybe it's taking notes if you're an older kid while the teacher is talking, raising your hand to ask questions, which might be the same as virtual school, but a different format, right? Not talking while the teacher's talking, remaining seated during lessons, reminders of what these types of rules are can be helpful. And managing distractions, well, first it's noticing when you're getting distracted. So helping kids remember you are going to get distracted at some point. So when you start staring off into space, you're not paying attention, just shift your attention back, focus on the teacher listening to what the teacher is doing instead of what other students are doing, right? It is, you know, maybe it's, if you're wanting to talk to a friend, maybe you can jot a quick note about the thing that you want to say to your friend, and then you can pl plan to share that with them later instead of talking during the middle of the time that the teacher is talking. And if you're having a lot of difficulty staying focused due to a disruptive student in the class, then ask the teacher if maybe you can move your child's seat. Right? Talking about strategies to stay on task. Maybe it's taking notes, active listening, 
thinking and predicting what is it that the teacher is maybe going to say next and, you know, trying to predict what they're going to say, trying to think about questions that you may have and asking questions during class that all helps you to stay more engaged and active during class and being able to kind of manage some of those distractions. What are signs to look for if my child is having difficulties or issues readjusting to being in school in person? Now, first things that parents always want to look for is any drastic or very sudden mood changes. So this would be things like your child is presenting as very withdrawn, not wanting to be part of the family, not talking or sharing as they usually would. Maybe they're seeming very sullen or very irritable. They might be very tearful. And we're going to expect that it's going to take time for everyone to adjust, right? Giving this kind of grace period of a couple of weeks. And some kids maybe are slower to adjust. It might take them more time. But if it's taking more than three to four weeks for your child to start to adjust into this routine, they maybe have persisting fatigue from the school day. That might be an indicator that they're really not adjusting and acclimating. They're di having difficulty following the routine. They're not completing their homework. Their grades might be dropping. They might be starting to develop really low self-confidence thinking, I'm just not good at school. I can't do this. I'm not, no good at this anymore. Maybe they're developing increasing fears related to school or socializing or crowds. If you're noticing those fears are growing bigger instead of shrinking as they're getting more experience, that would be another sign that maybe they're not adjusting well. Um, and they might be starting to develop some physical complaints. So sometimes things like stomach aches or headaches can really be related to persisting stress that might come from having difficulty with this adjustment. So at that point, I would advise parents to reach out and get support. Right? You can reach out to your child's guidance counselor at school, to your child's teacher to try to get some more information or maybe asking them to help support your child, reducing the workload in the short term to help ease the adjustment. You can reach out to your child's pediatrician to try to check in with them and see if they can get some more help or support or have recommendations. And then certainly reaching out to try to increase social support. Maybe that's having more playdates on the weekends, some of that special parent time to help to your child to adjust and making sure that they know that they're connected at home and always reaching out for mental health support if you're finding that, that none of these strategies are working. Well, I think that's all the questions we have for today. Thank you so much for listening and watching this episode of Bear Bites. Best of luck to all of you as you're adjusting back to a very different new school year. If you have any follow-up questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below.